Welcome to Richard and Greg, where we discuss topical issues of the day. Now, today is the 14th of February, 2020, and it's 1747 GMT. And we're discussing the coronavirus and asking Greg to give us a complete update. Now, very briefly, looking at the news headlines today, I see three sort of major headlines. Beijing sets stringent new quarantine rules by the New York Times. Heathrow scare as passenger falls in on flight, the Daily Telegraph. And cats are wearing coronavirus masks in China, which has been published by Fox News. So without further ado, Greg, are you on the line? I am indeed, and good evening. Good evening. As for cats wearing masks, you would expect Fox News to be reporting something as important as that, wouldn't you? While there's coronavirus floating around, whilst the American justice system has been made to look like a bunch of fools. And whilst Boris Johnson is organising a rehash of his cabinet, in my opinion, successfully, we shall see. But to return to coronavirus, which is now officially named, and what the difference is, I have no idea. It was named 2019 Novel Coronavirus. For some mysterious reason, they've changed the name, probably to confuse us, and they've called it COVID, which is obviously coronavirus, COVID-19. There are now 64,473 confirmed cases and 1,384 deaths to date. That's as of Today's date at 17.05 GMT, so 25 minutes ago, those were the figures. We have nine cases in Britain, so there really isn't all that much need for panic at the moment. However, as I've said all along, only a fool would be complacent about it. Yes, my hand wash in my pocket all the time, and I use it once or twice in an afternoon if I'm out. And I think it would be foolish not to do that. I have no expectation of getting this virus, but I'm damn sure I don't want to. So I will discourage it reasonably and rationally whenever I'm out and whenever I return home. Well, Greg, I've purchased from the Amazon links that we've put in the videos below. I purchased a pack of six. Work it's seems to work. Packs of three, Richard. Yeah, but I bought a pack of six. Work seems to work quite well <laughs> and is absorbed by the skin very quickly. Obviously, time will tell if I ever catch the virus, but hopefully it's a preventative measure, not a cure. So, Having made that comment about packs of three, I did so on purpose because another piece of advice for everybody is that the wearing of condoms will also act as a barrier to some extent against the virus. You'll have to, you'll have to, I was going to say enlarge on that, but that might not be an appropriate term. You'll have to expound on that, Greg. One method of transferring viruses Although if you're in that close contact with somebody, you'll probably find another way of doing it as well, such as orally or through them coughing to give it to you at an inappropriate moment. But the wearing of condoms does prevent transference of a virus that can be transferred through mucous membrane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Without so, drawing pictures. Yes. No, no pictures here. Thank you. So basically, looking at the number of cases over 64,000 and the number of deaths over 1380, how does that compare with a few days ago? Is it increasing exponentially or does it look as if it's moderately contained? It is increasing. There is no doubt about that. It has increased dramatically in China, but minded that it is in other countries, 
And there have now been deaths in the Philippines, Hong Kong, and somewhere else, which I slips my mind because I wasn't there. There are three deaths around the world other than China. However, there are a number of people in quarantine with confirmed cases. The mortality rate from the disease would seem to be between two and four times that of the normal winter flu. So it is not dramatically higher, but it's early days. That could go the wrong way very rapidly. When you think that there are now over 10,000 people who are considered to be critical, which puts them very much the wrong side of the eight ball. 82% of those who have it, have it, have the disease would appear to be mild, 15% severe, and 3% critical. Critical would seem to be a figure that would lead you to believe that some 19% of those would die. However, it's still early days to give accurate measurements. Any news on a vaccine? The same news as I gave the day that it came out, that if they discovered a vaccine today, it would take them three months to get it on the market and another three months to have sufficient dosage to give that vaccine to anybody but their favoured few, which would include high-level taxpayers and politicians. And we really don't need most of them to survive. It, to be able to move into mass vaccine, uh, you're looking at at least a year. So during that year, minded that we have had some 1,384 deaths so far, and almost all of those have been in February, and we're only on the 14th, that's an escalating number that if it continued that way, would be running into tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Would you say, Greg, you were more worried today than you were perhaps a few days ago, or less worried? Uh, at 74, I'm not worried. <laughs> I don't mean for yourself, I mean for humanity. <laughs> no, but I'm kind of making the point there. Realistically, I am concerned in that we hear rumours, I would incline to believe they're true, that China has been undercalling the problem. Uh, it took them from uh, the beginning of December until the end of January to actually admit that it was happening at all. And they have it would appear a number of individuals who are believed to have died at home unrecorded in that 1,384, which would indicate that there are possibly a fairly high number of unrecorded individuals who have the disease but have not reported because they were recently, and there was video footage on the internet of Chinese authorities forcibly restrain, restraining people in the street to put into quarantine. And I get the impression that being in quarantine is not something that one would relish in China. Agreed. Well, Greg, is if that's the roundup, have you anything else to add? Keep using the bio washes. Keep making sure that you take care of hygiene. If you are of a lifestyle that involves casual sex, you would be very well advised to wear condoms. And anybody sneezing or coughing, do so with a tissue over your face. Or if it creeps up and catches you faster than you can get the tissue out, sneeze into one's own elbow. Contortions are quite practical. Carry them out in your own time. Also, dispose of tissues responsibly and make sure that children are aware of how this transfers and that they must cover their faces when they sneeze or cough. 
To be honest, I don't believe enough people teach their children to do that under normal circumstances. It is only common good manners at the end of the day, not to cough and splutter all over people. If you have a serious belief that you might have contracted coronavirus and you've been in contact with somebody who has been traveling to one of the high risk areas or you yourself have been traveling internationally, you would be well advised to pick up the phone to your national health supplier, uh, those of you who are lucky enough to have a national health supplier, and discuss your symptoms with them. Because the sooner you do something about it, if it is felt that you are in danger, the better your chances of survival. Also, as far as the disease is concerned, consider others at all times. Any doubt that you might have the disease, which has all the symptoms of the normal annual flu, and the only real difference is that it's increasingly severe, do not forget that a very high number of people every single year are killed by common or garden annual flu. So getting overly excited about this is not wise, but bear in mind that if this performs in terms of spread, like the average annual flu, there will be somewhere between two and four times as many die from it as die from the average annual flu. There is some hope that like flu, better weather and slightly higher temperatures around will reduce the efficacy of the disease in spreading. The annual flu dies out at the end of the season. We can but hope that this does likewise. But then bear in mind that it could be lying dormant until next year. On that note, Greg, thank you very much. Next time I ask you for a final comment, I'll make sure I've got 25 minutes to spare. And I end this podcast just completely baffled that you started off by criticizing Fox News for promoting the fact that cats are wearing coronavirus masks. And then you tell us to all walk around with condoms dangling. Thank you, Greg. Much obliged. Good night. Good night. We hope you enjoyed that discussion, and if so, kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of our videos as and when they are published. And also in the description box below, we place links to certain books, articles, and programs which you may find of benefit, and for which we will receive a small commission should you purchase through our link and this will help support our channel and to enable us to develop it further.